Ladies and gentlemen, we present The Navy Lark by Laurie Wyman and starring Stephen Murray, John Pertwee and Leslie Phillips. <laughs> it has been said that what you learn from listening at or looking through keyholes never does you any good. A saying which my father does not agree with at all. Well, he was a butler, you see, and he sent me to university on the proceeds of his radar ears and telescopic eyes. <laughs> the crew of Troutbridge succumbed to this temptation as quickly as anyone else, particularly when the office door happens to be Captain Povey's. Oh, hello, Heather. I was wondering if... Shh! The... What's going on? Shh! <laughs> right, right. Yes, leave it to me, sir. Exactly. Troutbridge. Oh, what a disaster every time, sir. Well, really? So that's it. You're listening to Captain Povey's conversation. We would be if you'd stop nattering, sir. <laughs> I know what you mean, sir. I shan't tell them until the last possible moment. Still, the rest of the fleet should be safe with Troutbridge a thousand miles away. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you, sir. Goodbye, sir. Well, of all the underhanded... It's contemptible. I... Couldn't agree more. Fancy stooping to listen to other people's conversations. <laughs> I meant Captain Povey, not us. Well, in any case, you listen too. Well, only because you kept shushing me. <laughs> well, you shushed with the rest of us? I did not shush. Who did, you know? Four times. I may be a mere woman, but I know when I shush and when I don't shush. <laughs> and you shush? I did not shush. <laughs> and even if I did shush, perfectly entitled to shush. Oh, absolutely, as often as you like. And you did. Four times. <laughs> shush, 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 and shush. Good morning, Mr. Phillips. You seem to have a fine head of steam on today. I have, sir. In fact, I'm liable to blow my top if I don't find out what's behind that telephone cop. Oh! <laughs> oh, my foot. <laughs> Sorry, pardon, Mr. Phillips. Well, gentlemen, is your ship ready to put to sea? Oh, uh, well, she might be, sir. <laughs> yes, it rather, um, depends. Depends? It depends on what? On where they're supposed to be going, sir. <laughs> oh, I can't tell you that yet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, well, we knew that. You're, you're not going to tell us until the last possible... Oh! <laughs> My other foot. <laughs> Sorry, pardon, Mr. Phillips. Mm, so am I. Now none of my little piggies will be able to go to market. <laughs> well, now, gentlemen, I'm very busy. Um, what was it you came to see me about? We wanted to ask you, sir, uh, with the next cruise coming up, uh, what should we indent for this time? What do you mean? Well, should we draw Trivical Cot? Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, a trotical kip, uh, a critical top. Uh, Shorts. Thanks. Well, you can if you like. On the other hand, should we draw extra blankets, sir? Well, if you think they'll come in handy, do by all means. Just as long as you sign for them, I don't mind what you indent. In other words, you won't give us so much as a hint as to where we're sailing this time, sir. In a nutshell, number one. What? Well, you can't sail in a nutshell. <laughs> I mean, there wouldn't be enough room, would there? He's getting worse, you know. Now, get back to your ship, gentlemen. And um, if you'll take my advice, you'll ensure that she's completely seaworthy under any conditions. <laughs> <laughs> he is, you know. He's warped. <laughs> oh, come along, Mr. Phillips. Now, let's see. Black three on the red four. Red five on black six. Oh, hello, Padre. Not often we see you in the wardroom having a bit of a gamble. Oh, well, <laughs> hardly. Just trying my hand at a game of patience. Hmm, so I see. Red nine on the black ten. So kind, I had noticed, actually. Sorry, pardon. 
Do you have a drink, Mr. Phillips? Well, oh, hello, sir. No, no, thanks. Oh, black two on the red three, Padre. It's so okay. Yeah, red nine on the black ten. I was just about to... Then you can move your red queen onto the black king and put the black ten onto the red jack. That was my intention before you pointed it out. No, no further news about the cruise, I suppose, huh? Not so far, no. Black four on the red five. I had seen yeah, this. Then, uh, then you can turn up your ace. Quite. Of course, there's only one person who's bound to know where we're sailing to this... Come in! Oh, uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, sorry to interrupt and all that, of course. <laughs> That's all right, Chief. What is it? Uh, black seven on the red eight, Padre. <laughs> I was just about to... Uh, then you can bring the jack up to the Queen and move the two, three and four onto the ace. How terribly observant of you. What's the trouble this time, Chief? Well, it's... It's my dear white-haired old mother, sir. He does know where we're sailing. I don't, sir. At least, at least, not for sure. I've taken a pertwee pole amongst my relatives, but it's still all guesswork, sir. What's this got to do with your dear white-haired old mother? Well, I don't even know where we're sailing, sir. I want compassionate leave, sir. She's got the twinging screws again, sir. <laughs> yes, sir, coupled with a fluttering unfortunate. So I thought if I went home now, I might well be able to rejoin the ship the day after she sailed, and what a pity I missed her, sir. <laughs> no, Chief. All leave is cancelled. What was this about the Pertwee pole? Well, sir, for once the Pertwees are bewitched, bothered, and b beg your pardon, pardon, right? <laughs> now, so far, the pole reckons it this way 29% West Indies, 36% Hong Kong, 15.5% Brighton, 8.5% the Manchester Ship Canal, 2% Benchley's Gravel Pit, and 9% don't know. See, I take it you're amongst the 9% who don't know. I am, sir, and I don't like it, I don't. I don't like it one tiny bit, not at all, I don't. I don't like it, black nine on the red tent. <laughs> Much as one appreciates assistance from one's fellow seafarers, one would like to play this game on one's... Oh, the five of clubs on the six of diamonds. Yes, then the five and the six on the eight of spades. Oh, well, tish. <laughs> And probably, tosh. <laughs> temper, temper. <laughs> Hate a bad loser, don't you? Uh, so I can't stand them, sir. Red Queen on the... Uh, 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 sorry, pardon. Sorry. Not at all. One is supposed to be playing on one's own. So one does prefer to... Red Queen on what? Third column, Padre. Third column, Red Queen on Black King. Well, I can't see any... <gasps> I could kick myself. Kick myself. <laughs> oh, nasty. <laughs> well, now, Chief, as we've no idea where we shall have to sail to shortly, is the ship in first class, Nick? There's a nasty knock in our floggle toggle box, sir. A gentle trip out to the Bahamas might work wonders, sir, but point us towards Iceland or the Outer Hebrides. And I wouldn't like to say that we get out of the dockyard, sir. <laughs> I see. Not that'll worry me, sir. Won't worry me because I shan't be a bull, sir. I'm just on my way to the sick bay to report that I've been struck down by a vicious attack of the pusillanimous rigidities. <laughs> An attack of the what? Pusillanimous rigidity, sir. Otherwise known as Matalo's panic, sir. <laughs> it means that I'm scared, flaming stiff. <laughs> Well, aren't we all? Ten, Jack, Queen, King, out! <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> you see, I can do without your terribly well-meaning, but entirely, if you'll pardon the expression, unsolicited help. <laughs> oh, joy is me! With respect, Padre, I think your joy is going to be a bit short-lived. There's one card left under your elbow. Card under my... What card is it, anyway? One moment. It would appear to turn out to be the Ace of Spades. Ace of Spades! Ace of Spades? Ace of Spades! Ah! Oh, the Ace of Spades! Oh. The Ace of Spades is the card of doom! So that settles it. Permission to desert, sir. <laughs> and if you've got any sense, you'll come with me, sir. Man the boats, lads. The writing's on the wall. Over the hour with the life belts, lads. But we must be preserved. Stop that, Chief. 
Uh, stop it, Chief. Get below at once and check that Sloggle Toggle box. <laughs> Whether you like it or not, this ship must be ready to sail at a moment's notice. <laughs> No, not again. This is outrageous. Do they think I'm a completely dim-witted, half-baked idiot? If you're referring to the crew of Trowbridge, sir, yes, they do. <laughs> Look at this. It's the 15th report of a major mechanical fault they've sent in this week. First the floggle toggle box, then the clutch slip on the humdrum gears, then a suspected crack in the logger flange casing. But the only thing they've missed is that they can't undo their mooring hawser because somebody's tied the knot too tight. Read on, sir. What? It's unbelievable. <laughs> the rest of the fleet has sailed. The harbour is completely empty of shipping, with one glaring exception, Troutbridge, and they have managed to keep the civilian dockyard repair gangs busier than they've ever been since 1939. Well, of course, you'd know all about that, sir. I was only six years old at the time. That has nothing to do with it. <laughs> Get me the engineering officer from Troutbridge. I want a word with Lieutenant Queen. I thought you might, sir. He's waiting in the outer office now. Then wheel him in at once. Captain Purvey will see you now, Lieutenant Queen. Is that a fact? Ah. <laughs> Lovely place you've got here, sir. Well, it's impressed me. And I'm awfully difficult to impress. <laughs> there was uh, something you wanted, I take it. Yes, Lieutenant Cree, will you kindly explain to me how it is that your ship has had more mechanical faults in the last week than any other ship in the Royal Navy? You mean we've set some sort of a record? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's extremely gratifying. Lieutenant Cree, according to this report, uh -huh. every time you start your engines, the water in Portsmouth Harbour frosses up like a bubble bath. <laughs> Oh, you'd heard about that. <laughs> Most embarrassing. <laughs> now, I want you to understand that we would have attended to this somewhat unique phenomenon ourselves. But unfortunately, the lad down in the engine room who understands all the mechanical gubbins or whatever they are, hasn't been able to stay around long enough to give the matter his undivided attention. <laughs> oh, he's not ill again. Isn't it about time he reported sick? Oh, he would have done. He would have done. <laughs> unfortunately, up to now, the distance between the ship and the MI room has proved a sight too far for the lad to cover without him facing a very real problem en route. <laughs> if only there was some sort of request stop halfway. <laughs> he might well approach the overall journey with more confidence. Now, I'll be quite frank with you, Mr. Krieg. I am beginning to suspect these continued internal failures are nothing short of sabotage. The lad's very own words, sir. Yes. <laughs> I meant the ship, not the lad. You're going bright purple again, sir. You didn't by any chance have a cheese souffle last night, I suppose. That's the way they go, you see. Like a rocket three minutes later is the rule. I can't stand any more of this. Once again, the lad's words are. <laughs> Mr. Queen, will you shut up? Ren Chasen, put me through to the Admiral. Aye, aye, sir. I'm going to ask for a ball of inquiry to investigate the trouble aboard Trudbridge immediately. <laughs> Bridge number one speaking. Stop a look out here, sir. Leading seaman, and when am I going to be a petty officer now? Goldstein, Charlie. <laughs> Got your sprancy uniforms on. What? Well, in case you hadn't noticed, sir, Admiral's barge approaching now, sir. I can just about see them chugging their way through the filthy froth we kicked up this morning. <laughs> what? Hasn't that settled yet? Oh, no, sir. Portsmouth Harbour still looks like the top of a glass of stout. <laughs> oh, good gracious! <laughs> I thought that'd get you going. Jam-packed full of top brass as well, that barge is. I've never seen so much scrambled egg on hats since my uncle died, belted his bowler at one of Aunt Moppet's half-cooked omelettes. <laughs> Where are we now, Goldstein? Hang on, I'll have another look. Ooh, ooh, they're right... Uh... <laughs> Alongside. <laughs> Jolly poor navigating there. Was the Admiral driving? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, he was. And you know how he always likes to have a little go? He prefers it to a skiff on the boating lake because he reckons they don't call him in so quickly. 
Well, he certainly had his bobs with today, hasn't he? Oh, come along, Mr. Phillips. We must go and welcome them all aboard and take them down to the wardrobe. Well, after sailing through that froth, sir, I think they'd be much happier if it took them to the dry cleaners. <laughs> Now, this way, Admiral. Oh, do try to relax, sir. You've, you've sponged down beautifully. Hey, <laughs> Mr. Betsy, you don't want a court of inquiry here. You want a decontamination squad. Oh, my word, I'm powerful. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so well, now that you mention it... Well, oh. I didn't have to mention it. This uniform speaks for itself. Oh, open a porthole, somebody. Oh, hello, sir. Nice to have you aboard. <laughs> Where did all that muck and froth come from? Us, sir. It happens every time we start our engines. I thought that's what the Board of Inquiry was here to find out. Uh, for once, Lieutenant Murray, you're right. Where are the other idiots? They're just coming, sir. Right, trot them in. I'll introduce you to the first idiot and he can carry on from there. Uh, this, uh, this is Captain Hardcastle. All right, carry on, Hardcastle. If you want me for a casting vote, I'll be at the bar. Right. Let's get sat down and get on with it. I've got a train to catch. <laughs> Who put what bomb where? <laughs> bomb? Nobody put any... Hey, they didn't, did they, sir? <laughs> as far as I know. Oh, that's one of them four penneth the bent nails in the bearings jobs, is it? <laughs> He'll be here for months. you better meet the others. This is Commander Weatherby from security. Under the hole, under the hole. Uh, <laughs> Good morning. Have you settled? Yes, by open the button, by open the button, by Yes. How do you do, sir? I believe we met once be... Don't bother, you'll only start him off again. Now, the last member of the board is Captain... Uh, Captain... Uh, oh, the name is Captain... Atchison! <laughs> and before we continue this... In, 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 vast Jason, you must excuse me, but I'm suffering from a particularly vicious attack of hay fever. Oh, what a shame. <laughs> you can say that again. On second thoughts, I'd rather you didn't. Now then, how did all this sabotage or whatever it is start? Well, it all began when we left Troutbridge and went to Captain Povey's office, and we were talking to Wren Chasen about the trouble in her floggle doggle box. And hey up, hey up, hey up, hey up. What's Wren Chasen's floggle toggle box got to do with you? <laughs> well, I thought she'd blown a fuse. No, no that is, it, it, it doesn't belong to her. And, and what's uh, she doing with it? Well, she, uh, oh, yeah, well, she borrowed it from Troutbridge. No, 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 I mean, she, she, she didn't. Uh, we, we did. Uh, that, that is, well, we were, um, and, and she, she was, um, uh, could we have the next question? <laughs> Get a move on, you lot. It's high time you'd finished, because the gin has. We're being as quick as we're doing it. We're doing it as fast as we're doing it. We're doing it as fast as we're doing it. Nobody wants to stay long. Oh, go on to scotch. If I could make a suggestion. Here we go again. I was about to say that I suggest we put a stop to this section of our interrogation and go down below to the engine room and carry out our in in inspection I must remember to wear a sou'wester no good. still that's the best idea yet I'll put it in the report here Weatherby sign this will you uh, yes certainly yes under the commander am under the commander under the commander am am well, that's half a page gone. 
Now you, Captain, whatever your name is. It's Atchison! I'm sorry I asked. Right, that's it. Hey up, hey up, hey up! What's this load of scribble, Atchison? Oh, they're my Christian names! I can see that, but what are they? Oh, Lord. <laughs> they're Ignatius! Aloysius! 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 That's done it. We'll not stop him now. Aloysius! Aloysius! Go on, one for luck. Go on. Aloysius! Oh, how kind. Right, that's it. Let's get below to the engine room. Come along, Rin Jason, up the gangplank. After you, sir. Skirts are shorter these days. <laughs> yes, yes, quite. You know what? <clears throat> this really is a red letter day. Oh, they're actually all on deck waiting for us. Well, I imagine they're anxious about the result of the inquiry, sir. And um, their sailing orders. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am going to enjoy the next few minutes. <laughs> Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, sir. Morning, sir. Is it? <laughs> From my point of view, Chief, yes. It's a very good morning. <laughs> he is, you know. He's definitely warped. <laughs> yes, and distorted, sir. Uh, could we know the result of the inquiry, sir? Yes, you can indeed. The official finding unfortunately clears the ship's company of causing Portsmouth Harbour to look like an oversized sink full of dirty detergent. It appears that one of the dockyard repair gang accidentally connected a main steam pipe to the main waste pipe. So every time you rang down full ahead boats, you discharged all your washing up and old bath water under pressure. Oh, nasty. <laughs> yes, with 40,000 SHP turbines belting it out behind you, it was very. So uh, we're in the clear then, sir. Well, you may be, but I'm not. I was found guilty. And I've been severely reprimanded for borrowing a floggle toggle box. <laughs> I had a feeling that was going to happen. Yes. Right, gentlemen. Well, you've got your sailing order, so Ren Chasen and I will get ashore and. Uh... Hold it, hold it. It's a trap. Pertwee's been Shanghai. Yes, Chief. And it's a do it yourself Shanghai. Trout Bridge was to have remained in Portsmouth while the rest of the fleet was a thousand miles away on their cruise. Now I'm afraid you'll have to undergo sea trials to make sure the repairs are complete. I don't like it, but we don't want to go. I'll stuff my socks down the funnel. Oh, do stop panicking, Chief. <laughs> We're only going for a sea trial around the Shetlands and the Orkneys. Oh, well, that won't take... Mr. Phillips, perhaps you'd better look at your sailing orders again. It's the South Shetlands and the South Orkneys, and they are in the Antarctic. <laughs> he's distorted. No, he's not, sir. He's warped. Right. Well, off you go, gentlemen. Bon voyage. Uh, come along, Ben Chasen. We must get ashore. They've a long, long trip ahead of them. Goodbye, boys. Goodbye, Heather. See you when you get back. If we get back. Put a light in the window, miss. <laughs> yes, well, a very satisfactory morning. I can hardly believe that I'd actually got rid of that shower for the next... <laughs> Pardon. <laughs> Start taking notes, Ren Jason. Failure to cast off gangway before sailing. <laughs> Left hand down a bit. Left hand down a bit, it is set. Mr. Phillips, mind that. <laughs> To sinking barge and hazarding own ship? Ah, uh, Mr. Phillips, sir, the harbour entrance. Stand by, Ren Chasen. Harbour entrance? What harbour entrance? Everybody down! <laughs> you got that, Ren Chasen? <laughs> Loud and clear, sir. Right, back to the office. The damage report should start coming in any minute now. <laughs> I have an awful feeling you're right, sir. But look at them. They do try. Oh, 
Stephen Murray, John Pertwee and Leslie Phillips have been doing their nuts for the last time in the current series in The Navy Lark, written by Laurie Wyman. Stephen Murray was the number one, John Pertwee was the chief petty officer, Leslie Phillips was the sub-lieutenant. Captain Povey was played by Richard Cordicott, Heather was Heather Chasen, Lieutenant Quig was Ronnie Barker, the Admiral was Tenny Levens, and Captain Atchison was played, splayed by Michael Bates. <laughs> Incidental music for the series was by Tommy Riley and James Moody, the announcer was David Dunhill. The show was produced by Alistair Scott Johnston.